you got business, and then you got music. You got the music, and then you got the business. What's it called? Music business. Not music friends. Not opinions, music business. So again, if there's certain shit that you feel like, oh, okay, I can do a producer. A producer, it's easier to sell a producer than it is to sell a rapper because he's just making beats. Uh, no. And there lies a big problem that I've always had with you guys is that you conflate the two all the time. Why Producers do, do not just make beats. A producer is a music producer. Their job is to, because when we talk about coaching talent, the producer, you know what Rick Rubin you does? You, you, no, 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 no. Because no, you no. guys are you don't always become, off. Because you don't become a producer until somebody's able to say, I like to be. That's just a beat maker. But see, but this a, a producer this, will take a beat from a beat maker and finish the song. So that's the producer's job is to listen, finish the record. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. And that's I, not a producer. That's a beat maker. That's, hear, hear me, and that's fine. We're not in that world no more. Yes, we are. We, man, you listen, just, listen, listen. You guys are in hip hop. Y'all act that way. Because this is this is what I'm speaking. We're talking about a hip hop artist. That's fine. But just We're because you're talking about various different genres of music. Because yo, because you got songs. You guys oh, also God. look. Let's hear this. Rick Rubin is the perfect example of what I'm talking oh, man, about. Give me somebody else, man. <laughs> no, I'm not. not. What about Quincy man. Jones. Somebody else. He's not a great example for this. Okay. <laughs> Rick Rubin's whole thing is he's a he's a ten percent guy as a producer. He don't beat make. He got nothing to do with that. Rick Rubin walks in and goes, "Do that one first. And then it becomes a hit record, all right? I ain't Rick Rubin, but when we talk about coaching a let's, record, the coaching is as simple as let's keep it a hundred. You gotta do, you gotta do that. Let's first keep it a hundred. No, let's keep it a hundred. But that's when you're making a hit record. That's Rick, what you need a producer it becomes, for. It, be, it becomes no, you pay the fucking producer because you're buying the name. Motherfuckers go get them a mustard beat. You're talking the game on that part. I, I, I'm talking, I'm talking the music, the bit, even all the way from the music. Rick Rubin. What, 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 what was going to make Rick Rubin sell is the fact that it's Rick Rubin, and he just was, he's the sound we, Beastie Boys, right? I get all of that. But, what, I'm, I'm I'm getting... just, I'm, but, but this is what I'm saying. As a producer, what bu builds your value is how many motherfucking songs or hits you make, right? Yes, that is true. So therefore, you have to produce beats. As a producer, then you once, do not once only make the you're composition. Not him. I once am, you, but once you, you once have you the make definition the, hey, wrong. Once you make the composition, then somebody as an artist is willing to come and trust your tutelage. That's the the tutelage, tutelage. But you don't you get work into, your way into that. You have to thank you. I'm you're not, not saying you to, don't. You have to have a relationship in general to even get so, there. A, a goal but my whole thing is is that you guys. You guys' approach because has always been to misname shit and not really. It's, it's you guys do this thing like I told you before: square pegs, round holes, making people work together who don't want to work together, sticking people together because, whose styles don't work together. Because, and then when I talk about like, hey, you know, you could ask your team also because every time you guys just silo that all on your own. You got people working together and shit just don't work. You can't put somebody who's been making music for two or three years, who's 22 years old, in a room with a 35-year-old and not expect some fucking friction. But nobody's... Okay, but look, 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 look. Nobody's, so when we're talking about this guy, all I'm talking about is, hey, I've evaluated if if this guy. If you're 35, let's keep it real. We don't live in the world of what people used to... Because when, when, when I was coming up, you was just... Happy to be in a studio. From every rapper you could talk to from this, oh man, we was happy. They, the studio with itself was the I. Now, what kind of hits he made? What's his, what is this? What does this shit look like? Numbers Which look sucks. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's what it's so. It, it goes back to the business side of when we was doing business. It had nothing to do because that's the that's the main thing that's closing your door. Well, what kind of hits he made? Okay, he hasn't made no hits on it. Okay, well, let me listen to it. But you niggas didn't. 
You, how many of my records have you actually listened to? Barack, we li- listen, 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 listen. And I don't mean this in a, in a, sometimes it has nothing to do with the beat maker. And then I'm sometimes not. it had nothing to do with the beat. Sometimes it had to do with the, the actual talent within itself who trips, who gets in a certain way. When, when at the same time, like you said, oh, well, you got to be able to take direction. Well, the problem, the friction came in when the direction came in. You wasn't feeling the direction. Because you got motherfuckers who never made records before given given direction. That's why. How is it? Okay, look. Who? Who was given direction who'd ever made a record before? See, now, if Rob Me? was coming and get... What was the last... As a producer... As a producer, you, when I told you, hey, bro, how do you want to go? How is it that you want to do it? What is, what is it that you want to do? Okay, you need to make money? You need to make a sound now? I suggest this is what you do in order to sell. And I'm I, giving you the. I'm, I'm giving. So I when that. you did, but at the end of it, and, and too late. By the way, I did listen to what you said. Too late. I did listen, but it, but it was too late. So I'm not. So you're so wrong so with that. so. All right. So now everybody's what on a Detroit sound. I don't care about that part. So though. you have to look at it. Okay, listen. You got to look at it because you look at a producer and you. This is my issue with this shit. You guys think that you can go to Pharrell and tell Pharrell, make music like Dr. Dre. Nah, that's not. That's what you guys keep doing. Listen, listen, You guys listen, keep coming listen, in listen, and telling listen, me, listen, which is, listen. this is, by the way, not listen, the conversation we was trying that's to have. The, from the business side, from the business side, that's why they're asking the question. What do you, how do you want to go? If you can, if you want to be Dre and put out an album every fucking 10 years, economically, it has to make sense. If you don't have economics, the, the money to do this elaborate thing, okay, well, how do you want to go and how do you want to move it from a business standpoint? Because we have to generate money. You have a limited time. We have a limited time. So do you want to go fast? Do you want to go slow? What is your finances? Because if your, if your finances look great, hence, what's the budget? Any producer, what's the budget? It's always the first word that come out of it, the motherfucker's mouth if your finances is good, then we can go in the direction that any direction we want because guess what? I don't have to worry about nothing other than you just making beats. But if that's not what it is and we're living real life, then I have to strategize what's going to make the most money right now. Not next week, not down the right now so in order to make it comfortable for this individual to make and do what he wants to for the long term Kanye came out yeah he had great beats but at the same time he was a beat maker for everybody else he was beat making for everybody else they didn't know the, I, once he established himself he was able to oh y'all don't believe in me okay I'm gonna go take and do me now but how he got on is beats he had to get him to submit those beats. They weren't like, they weren't trying to take no direction, man. Nigga, shut up. Hey, man, put that beat on. Dog, he's, so you're talking about somebody, and let me say first, first, Talk first. Me. You're right. It took me, it took me getting dropped and going through my own shit and looking back on it all and be like, ah, okay, yeah, you didn't have the relationship to do any of the things that you were trying to do, therefore it didn't work. You really weren't trying to adapt to the music that was, to what was going on around you, so people weren't gonna like the beats as much. You didn't listen when he told you, hey, go get you some old school samples. Didn't listen then, and so I finally went, oh, okay, let me do the thing that he said to do. So I, so I look at it from the perspective of, you're not wrong about that. Communication sucked, because a lot of that stuff, sometimes you gotta just say that. But by the time the message comes through, ah, I'm out the door, we're already done, right? But my whole thing is that when we have these conversations, what I ask is like, yo, don't discount the fact that there are other people around here. Because when we're dealing with all these artists and stuff like that, it would have been better to just have me and Rob in that room. Me and Rob in that room, we can come up with a plan together. And it's easier when we are communicating, talking together to say, Baraka, this is your role here. We want the beats. We need these records to come out quickly. We don't have time for that shit. Got you. 
But, but, but that is a conversation to be had together. I, I'm glad Rob is here. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> yeah. How much you get paid to come in and record these artists that were assigned to banks management and do videos and shit like that? How much did you get paid? Nothing. Watch this. Did a motherfucker walk in, got the nerve, man, you know what I'm saying, to throw up money all in the air and everything like that and couldn't even buy a nigga a fucking burger? Yes. And I, I think that just goes back to people on different pages, you know? I think those artists, I'm not going to say any names, but they thought everything is supposed to just be given to them. But in reality, that, that that's not the case. So, this and this is the point. This is the, I agree with that, because that's the energy that I have to deal with in those situations. I'm talking about how we, well, how I, do we deal with artists? I'm, I'm, but even how we deal with artists, all right, look. Yeah, is he great? Yeah, everything. Yeah, for sure. One problem. I told you one problem. Hey, bro, you got two. Like, I, I sat back and listened, because I don't, I don't, you want me to be real with you? I don't give a fuck. I'll never probably listen to his music ever fucking again. But from a business standpoint, I'm looking. Oh, okay, great look. Got the look. Everybody else is vibing off him. Can I hear him? No. I never want to be the asshole that can look at the artist and be like, oh, you're hot or you're not. I tell every artist that come in, hey, listen, I don't listen. Let the team. Because I can never have an biased opinion or never be nobody be like, well, St. Nick said I was good or St. Nick said I was garbage. No, St. Nick didn't even fucking listen. Yeah, we picked up on that. that I want to listen because the minute that I listen, I become a critic. And I'm not a fucking critic. I'm here to fucking sell. That's all I'm here to do. I'm here to sell. How can we How can we make money off it? How can we generate some money? Where can we take this to? Who can I take this to? How can I flip it? That's Which what it, I'm thinking from a business side. The team loves us, niggas. So what is the... What's where is the, the the some of the stuff that you're talking about? You have to you, you again, but it goes back to like you said, bro, my brother. It's the relationship we invite. We have to figure out his relationship. We got to figure out his working process. We can't just bring another fucking Kindle. Yeah, that's exactly. what I said though. But it, but exactly. But at the same time, from what you're hearing, people tell you exactly the movement that they. He's not ready for all that. He's not. That's what. That's the only fucking issue. You got how many songs? Like you're not hearing, but you you got how many? Nigga, you can nigga, you can drop a song, nigga, just on on just because. So I, I guess then okay. So I'm glad you brought that up because that tells me, that tells me. Damn, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Oh. that that tells me where where we disagree, and that's all I really wanted to figure out. Yeah, this where is do we disagree? Is that part right there? Yeah. And I think that just comes. <laughs> Saint Nick's pissing. Or whoever's watching. Um, yeah, I think it just comes down to going into whatever you're investing your time into, knowing kind of what they expect. That's my look. I think it's premature to know somebody for an hour and a half. And yes, I agree that there's some fear and apprehension there. Mm -hmm. But I'm not looking at an artist and going, oh, he's scared, fuck him. I'm not looking at an artist and going, he's scared, fuck him. That's my whole opinion. As somebody who has myself put my name on, on projects yeah. and put my own money into it and been fucking scared, yeah. So that's that's where it is. Yeah, so you're willing to push through that. I'm willing- Say Nick just want to be like, fuck okay, it, yeah. Yeah, that's my thing is I'm willing to push through that and like, okay, cool, then let's, let's see then. Hey. It's better for me to know, ask, figure it out, I would rather look and be wrong and instead of being like, oh, we met that one cool guy. Oh, look, he's a bum now. Or, oh, look, he's a fucking superstar because someone else was willing to take a risk that we weren't. And that, that, that goes back to what St. Nick said, though. He needs to, we money now. We need it now, now, now. Whereas, like, you're willing to put that time and he can't really afford to do that, really. And that part, okay, that part is fine. But I, 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 but, but uh, he, for a guy, for, for when you say he's scared, the nigga's putting out a record next week. So how scared is he really? 
Man, listen, he's gonna listen, be scared because he's an introvert. We are all scared that way. Listen, but listen. he's putting out the records, and he's what he's doing anyway. So he's pushing through it. Why can't we? Hey, man, this ain't on the spot at the spot. This is called, man. You know what I'm saying? Businessman versus artistry, man. You can always catch this over here on the spot at the spot, man. At the spot, Soto Studios, where me and Barack will sit back and we'll debate his artistry and the business, man. You know what I mean? But going back to that in reference. It's like I used to tell any artist. I'll say, Nick, man, I just made it. Is it done? Well, no, don't bring it to me. I don't want to hear it. Because I'm a business. I'm not your fucking friend. I'm not your fucking buddy. I'm not, we're not going to hang. We're not going to smoke. We're not going to drink. I'm here to make sure we coop and recoup what we're supposed to. You see, I'm going through arguments right now. Like, man, look, hold on here. We got a problem. You don't want to spend the money on an artist who's really not ready to do it. He's going to back out because he got fucking man, I, cold I, feet. I, I, and I get that. I just don't. I got three strikes already and I was say, out. Yeah. I got three strikes real quick. And it was like, uh, what? <laughs> but my perspective on those three strikes was that if you guys had handled it differently, I'm not saying my way. I'm saying that the people how you handled it as opposed to how you could have handled it. I'm looking at it from the perspective of like, hey, if you had just brought the experience in the room, we could have told you, don't sign them, niggas. I, all I had to do was ask two questions and I could have told you that shit. But but but, but I'm listening to a guy with, with no infrastructure and 300 songs, like, get him right now. What what are those two questions? What's your output? Okay. The next thing is, is okay, uh, how many fucking verses can I get in a day? So I'm looking at it more like, okay, if I play two or three records, I want to see you write a hook right now. I don't want to see you write a hook in 10 minutes. I don't want it to be, I mean, it, it'll take 10 minutes. I'm saying, I don't want to wait two and three hours for you to get done writing a motherfucking hook. If you can do this, show me right here, right now. None of this, play a beat this motherfucker likes. I, I, Give me a hook so, right now. So I'm going to be devil's advocate. I'm going to be the artist. And um, you got a platinum hit? You do you gold? want one? Because you, you ain't got no hits. You 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 I, you don't either. But no, no, no. But, but if, let me see. I'm let saying me see as a the, resume. As the weird, I'm the manager who's but, bringing you in to sign you. I'm gonna sit you down, and I want to know what your output is like. I want to know how often you're in the studio, and I want to see you write me two or three hooks right now in these next thirty minutes. And if you can't do that, hey man, best of luck to hey, you. Hey, but that's why you can't miss the artistry versus. The business, the artistry kicked in. Maybe I can hold these guys. Maybe I can, can, maybe in two years, maybe in four years. So, you know what? That sounds, like you said, the skill and the talent. Kendall had talent. He had skill. Yeah, he had, yeah, he had skill. So, so the same way that you're thinking of the artistry, I thought of it as artistry. Fuck the artistry. Here go the business side come in. Because when the business came in, that's when it's like, so when you make the comment of, well, why did you, because well, I was thinking as an artist, the same thing that you're preaching to me right now is to think like an artist, but then when I sat back and I said, okay, well, you've got a large, um, damn, we have the, uh, how many? Okay, yeah. Are you willing to gamble on yourself? No. Pfft, why the fuck am I? If you're not willing to gamble on yourself, you got too much business. Okay, well, are you willing to do something with them songs? If I tell you right now, man, okay, look, check it out. I give you 20,000, man. For, for, for your first album right now. Are you going to push? Uh, no. I ain't, uh, what, the, what the fuck? How far are you willing to take the money? See, everybody's a fucking, everybody's a fucking uh, business genius now. Uh, or what they want to do with their catalogs. But nobody wants to put the gamble of saying, you know what? Fuck it. I'm, I, I'm so hot. Yeah, fuck it. Y'all yeah. want, want a piece of this? I give you a piece of this. Yeah. But it's kind of like, yo, it's kind of like, it's like making a decision without the due diligence. I was in, I was here. I heard the same conversation. I don't disagree. But when you're talking to somebody with zero infrastructure and two years of experience, what you're asking for not getting in the responses is predictable. Why the fuck would I gamble putting records out when I don't know how to do it and I've only read about it online? Let me get around some people who have done it 
But you're making And that, then now we can start to figure you're, out. You're making that assumption. You're making it. We're both making assumptions. What, what, That's what, my point. So potentially, potentially, it's like I used to tell you when you would make your beats. And you'd be like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, hey, Brock, do me a favor. What? Don't fucking, I'm, I'll tell you the problem with, I, I keep it at 100. The problem with your beats. But they, we don't live in such a complex world. The simpler you make them, the easier it is. We're not in that generation of where Method Man is going to love your shit. We're old heads. We're going to like that shit because we like the, we like the turnovers. We, that's us. But these youngsters, man, he was, oh, yeah, man, the two, two minutes and 30 seconds. God, but God damn, by the time I fucking, by the time I light the blunt, turn the music up, hit one corner, hit the second corner, Song's over. I got to hit a repeat <laughs> just so the song can fucking play again because the song's so goddamn short. Well, against one of your beats and how you produce and shit, that we're never even going to be because you change up. It's just, this, is, this is the thing where I get at earlier about you guys not quite getting the point. I walked in the door because, you know, your post really is, hey, we need a music producer. A music producer walked in. Music producer, <laughs> give, me, give me a sec here. No, I'm not. Music producer, <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing, doesn't come from hip hop. And it's like, yo, I keep t saying, yeah, like I'm doing some R&B for this guy and I can make some hip hop beats and stuff, but it's square pegs and round holes. Again, where it's like, I'm telling you, yeah, I really come from the alternative space. I don't actually come from hip hop. Now I can do it. That's, that's what I was gonna ask you, Brock, is, you know, you are a producer, you like to, you know, cultivate, sit in right. with and the so artist, but with, can you be a beat maker? So that was the point of that pack. Mm -hmm. That was the point of me saying yesterday, all right, I'm gonna do four more for the next year, because that is me. Shit, nigga, I posted it. I'm done with producing for the end of the year. I'm gonna be a beat maker. The post exists, okay? So this thing that you're talking about, like I said, I listened but too fucking late. And so the thing is that like now that I'm sitting there I'm like, like, hey, I need some help with the with the 808s and the kicks because it's not really a thing that I do. Like, no, nah, no. Nah. I get you because now I'm in a situation where the business does matter and now I don't have the fucking time to sit here and, oh, I need to do the kick just like this. It needs to do a fa la 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 la. Now I need to sell a beat for 1500 so I can figure out some money and shit in the next few weeks. I get it. I'm the choir now. But I'm also saying I told you guys this shit already. So it's one of those things where it's like, hey, when, you know, maybe I am being too artistic, too much. But I'm sitting back like, dog, if we're both salesmen, <laughs> you mean to tell me you can't flip this guy's head or that I can't? Or that anybody can't get in this guy's ear because he's putting out records already anyway. So you need to make money right now and he's putting out records already. Clearly, he ain't that fucking scared. He might hey, be. Hey, hey. But the reality is, is whatever he's going through that he wasn't putting out records, right, well, now I'm going to start putting out records. Yeah, because when you start out doing this shit, two years is too soon for anybody. He met you right at the right time. I'm telling you, he met you at the right time. There's no one there. Could be. He's putting out records already. Could he be. He has no infrastructure, no real information, and no fucking plan. He Could walked be. in, he sat down, and he rapped for you. And I'm saying, God did it right here. And you are saying, I'm, nah, fuck it. I'm no, What I'm saying is, come back when you're ready. He's coming back tomorrow. Come back when you're ready. Come back when you with an open mind and say, hey, the same thing that you want them to let you give them that direction. No, 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 no. You guys won that argument. Y'all won. I get it. I, I got past the whole no, trying no, no, to no, no, produce no, 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 because no, no, I don't no, no, have no. a the relationship. I told you this yesterday. No, no, no. But but this is what I'm saying. The same way that as you come in as a producer and you want to be able to give direction and be able to say, let me add this, is the same way I want to come in as management or a business and say, hey, look, let's try this. Can I ask you a question? And with no pushback. That's, there is my issue. Can you hear no 
and that just be okay? That like, hey, maybe that's not the direction this person wants to go. Because the number one thing that I've always looked, I don't want to bring it back to myself, but I only have I have Kindle as an example because that's how I walked in. But I'm sitting back like, yo, do you understand and respect that an artist does have their vision, or are you going to come in and usurp their vision and say, fuck your vision because I'm all about business and I don't really give a shit about your music, which you already said. Do my vision. Oh, you can't do my vision? Fuck it, I can't manage you. Because it goes back to artistry and business. Why waste your time with a, a, a manager who's not going to believe in your artistry in the way that you wanted to go in the direction of? But that's what I'm saying. Is that so, so, it sounds like that's your point, which is like, no, I don't believe in your direction. I want you to act. Oh, you don't want to act? Oh, you're scared. Fuck you. Because when it comes to business, we all have to play the game. But you wanted Stevie Wonder. All the Stevie way. Wonder had to play the game. Marvin Gaye had to play the game. Everybody's going to play the game. And you know what the game is? Let's do it this way. Then once you're on, go do as you see fit. And everybody does it. That and that's get, fine. That blows up in the but game. Do you ever provide that path? Or is it just, just do what I'm saying for now? Because, and, and what I'm really getting at, mm -hmm. it's the communication of it. I understand that part of it very well because there's a reality that I've said to an artist where he comes in and he goes, well, I want to do it this way and I want to do it that way because I put up the money on a project myself for an artist, mm -hmm. okay? So I had to tell him, like, bro, you can't just do whatever you want with my money and my investment in you. You do got to fucking listen. But on the other side, and to be totally honest with you, maybe I kind of made this as a mistake because I was new at what I was doing. I looked at it like, okay, let me understand what your vision is and what you're trying to build. Let me give you what I see for what we can do together. Let me give you some goals. Let me give you some, some structure, how we can get to a specific place that I want to get to and that you want to get to. I don't know if that was the right call, but I knew that that was the way that made sense. So that way, hey, at the end of the day, me and the artist, we're on the same page. We're trying to go to the same place and so that they understand that there is an off ramp where it's like, yo, now that we're doing this particular thing and I know I'm gonna get make my money back, which by the way, I did. Shockingly enough, um, at least we know we're going here. I'm not gonna necessarily be 100% agreement with everything you wanna do, and you ain't gonna be 100% in agreement with everything I wanna do, but we know we're going here. But that's the that's the that's the give or take, right? When do you do when you, you give or take? Hey, artists, rappers, singers, musicians, athletes. When you sign a contract with a management company, that's exactly what they're supposed to do: is manage you. Do we give a fuck about your gripes? We hear them, but we have to look forward into look. This is what needs to happen. After we reach this plateau, you can do as you please. But unfortunately, we've got to do it this way. And when you're dealing with, again, artists, they're free spirits. They want to work how they want to work. And they want to do how they want to do. And the majority of the time, that's how they're able to move until when the business side come in and say, uh, no, we're not doing that. And when it goes back to, well, how are we in agreement? Well, how do you walk into a college and tell them, I expect to make an A, and this is going to be our common goal, so are you going to be teaching me this and this by the second trimester? Because if you're not, then I need to... They're going to look at you like, what the fuck are you... Get a... Fail! Fuck is you telling me? So even in the sense of when, 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 you, when you're talking, when you're talking business... And, or not even, we're not even going to say business. We're going to just say when you're coming in and you know you need the help and you've already established you need help, but you're not providing me 
what is my expertise at doing, which is flipping, it, it, it's flipping money. From an independent standpoint, that's my ex expertise. Can a motherfucker walk some shit in and get some traction going for motion? Yeah. But if you burn bridges, goes back to the thing, if you're burning bridges, if you're pissing on somebody, and when they mean pissing on somebody and shit like that, that's what they call it, the thing, you're pissing on my pants. Let me do my motherfucking job. You're pissing on my pants. He's not going to want to explain to you A, B, C, D, E. He's going to say, didn't you trust me? Okay, then shut the fuck up and let me do what I need to do. And when I tell you that you need to be here or you need to do this or you need to do that, then it's love. But right now, because you're juggling. And again, I'm, I'm not going to use you, but I'm going to use you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, we can use me as an example all throughout this conversation. It works fine. I'm, man, I've got to find out, okay, who's going to like his beats? Who's going to be into his beats? None who's of your gonna, friends. Huh? <laughs> None of your friends. Well, no, no, no. no, no. I'm saying. <laughs> that, who, hey, square pegs it? and round holes, man. <laughs> how can we sell it? Because you're already cutting off my circle of friends. Yeah, and I think that was the issue is Brock at first didn't want to mold or change kind of your ways, you know? And then, I didn't want to change my sound. Yeah, that's that's, that's what I mean. my. It, but the, the, here's the thing. That's one of those things where, like, when I say that, I am telling you what I what my brain headspace was a year and a half ago yeah. with less information. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now it's more like... We're, we're talking in the past, but... Yeah, yeah. This There's be a lot the of problem. now. There's this, from yeah. everybody. This be the fucking problem, man. You motherfuckers, motherfuckers forget what the fuck it is to be a producer with the key word, produce. Either you produce great product or you produce horrible product, but you produce. Yeah. Well, I mean, let me put it like this. Just to, to speaking back to the past, what I think is like something that, and, and I don't know if it would have changed things, but I think that having... Uh, good communication about some of those expectations from manager to artist is super duper important. And from my end, it's like, if I'm talking to somebody who's my manager, and this, again, I'm coming from a totally different genre. That's where the communication part becomes really, really important. I'm not coming from hip hop. I don't operate on hip hop rules. So when we talk about changing my sound, and then the sound that you exposed me to doesn't sound good at all. I'm older. I don't come from hip hop. Square pegs, round, round holes. holes. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, it's one of those things where it took a hot sec for me to get to the point where I was just like, you know what? Maybe the music that I'm making doesn't meet the opportunities that are available to me. So, and it's a matter of, am I willing to make the adjustment to those particular opportunities? Or... Am I just gonna be happy going off and doing my own thing? And I got to the point where it was like, the message and the communication wasn't there. It just came off like, because if you're talking to a singer songwriter, I'm coming from that world. Mm -hmm. So we all have our own sound. And so like when I'm working with an artist or singer songwriter, my job as a producer is not to change their sound, it's to enhance it and bring it out, and bring right. it to the forefront. It just so happens that I practice songwriting and composition and what people hear in that practice is they go, oh, that's a beat. But to me, it's just some unfinished thing because I don't come from that world. So with this last like pack I put together, the point was I'm gonna just make a beat and just do the thing that I would do, keep it simple, make it rappable, do that thing because that is a part of the producing part where it's like, okay, since I think I'm such hot shit, let me put my time and energy into doing this thing that I was asked to do and didn't do. So let me try that out and see what comes of it. Okay, I like this a lot. Well, I'm sick of it now. I'm moving <laughs> on to the next pack of stuff, yeah. which can be a totally different sound. It's a little more modern. But that's that communication where it's like, hey, if you're not, if you're talking to a hip hop producer, you're going to speak their language. 
if you're talking to singer songwriter comes from the indie world and you start saying those things it's like hey this guy isn't listening to what i'm telling him about what i'm doing at all but, and what he's saying yes it a, makes hip hop sense but, res- but it comes off not only a is insulting but b if you tell an artist I'm not listening to your shit, then how can you possibly effectively market and sell what they do if you don't care? Because when it comes back to the resort of, do I have the time that we can do this? Or do we have to make a financial gain? If we have to make a financial gain, then I don't have to, like, and this is the coldest part to it. Let's keep it 100. As well as I'm helping you and everything like that, I'm also helping everybody else and teaching. So if there's small conflicts or whatever like that and it's going on, you know, you got to alleviate that. You're not just focused on this, just just one trade. You're, you're dealing with a lot of other different trades. So it was like, hey, look, I need you to do this, do this, get this done. And because of your professionalism, it's what you expect. Hey, this is all I expect. I don't expect nothing other than because it's from a financial standpoint. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, if I have time. Sit down and coach and talk to your ass. Well, no, it's not even sit down and coach and talk. It's like time, financial time. Right. If every, yeah. find that, listen, listen. Goes back to where we started this. 250000 Yeah. Guess what? That 250000 is part of paying your rent, bills, your car notes, if the cat gets sick or not, it's all of that. Then we can produce probably some of the greatest fucking hits that anybody has probably heard. Yeah. But if you don't have that from a financial standpoint, then it's like, okay, in the great words of Rihanna, a work, 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 work. Yeah. No, That's all it is. So that goes back to producing. Can you produce? Are you willing to go upside your genre? Are you willing to go upside of your 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 traditional way or the traditional music? Can you expose yourself? Because it's the same thing. We just sat here and looked at the artists. Are they marketable? Can they only do one type? Can they only do trap rapping? Can they also do man? Is it melodic? Can they sing with it? Are they go just going on? So you're trying to find out how far they can go out, how far can they can stretch? And some of the best are going to be. We, some of the best producers is producers that you don't even know they produced that. Yeah. Warren G is probably one of the best fucking producers on the fucking West Coast because he's the one that went and got the records for Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre is exactly who you said he is, Rick Rubin. He comes in, okay, you need to turn this up and bring that up, that bass on that. And that. But Warren G, Warren G was producing some hits. Warren G produced for pop. Yeah. Warren G produced, he's one who saved fucking Def Jam. But they was able from a business standpoint to say, wait a minute, this is Dr. Dre's brother. Goes back to that work relationship. Yeah. He was working with them and he didn't get signed? Oh, okay, well, let's go find him. Hey, you got some beats? Oh, you got some beats? Let's hear him. Okay, yeah, we love to sign you. Why? Because they're trying to tap in on no L.A. sound. He's part of that same little, that same little um, crew that came up out of there, and because he's from that, guess what? Now we're gonna tap into this LA sound because Death Row is getting rich, and we're not getting none of it. So it goes all the way back to opportunity, who you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying, money. You all, yeah. No, bro. I mean, at this point, I understand exactly what you're getting at. Uh, but I'm, I, it's, hey, hey, it's like, let's agree to disagree. I, and okay. learn from it. That's that's the biggest thing, you know, is making the adjustments in the future. So, man, you know what I'm saying? This would, man, that's what we call it in this show. It may be a show me and Barack do where we'll take a subject, rather if it's a pro or a con, we'll flip ahead of tails. No, for real. We need, to, we need to teach these assholes how to fucking have healthy debates, mm-hmm. but then shake hands at the end and say, let's agree to disagree. And then, man, that's be the key. So we'll take a subject. Where we can, I can catch you. I wasn't We've already started. I, I, really, I really was going to be like, no. You're right. <laughs> no, no. If it's like, you know, like I, if you're 
from the perspective that you basically said, it's like, look, there is a financial portion of it here. I have to deal in that particular man. I don't really have time to deal with the art. It ain't really personal. I need to know that I can do something with you right now. I don't have time for the development aspect. Doesn't mean you're not a good artist. Doesn't mean you won't blow up. But I need to do something next week, not six to eight months from now. And I'm, I was coming into the conversation like, not really looking at it from the perspective of of like right now or needing 250 i'm looking at it from a very different put an artist out perspective that is devoid of those particular things but i'm always a big fan of looking at the biggest picture the biggest picture is bigger than the big picture the biggest picture is Right, but what can I do with you tomorrow? Can I can I trust that I'm going to put two hundred fifty thousand dollars into you? Can you make back that? Can you make that back? If if the answer is I don't know, then the answer is no. You know, if I can get an opportunity for you to act in, do a small bit part in L.A. for thousand dollars, but it's going to get you in front of somebody, and you don't want to go. Okay, fine, thanks. I just wasted a phone call. You know, can I put you in the studio with so-and-so and and make you, and you can do X, Y, Z? Nah, I really don't do that, though. Okay, I just wasted another phone call. Now you're fucking with my relationships now. Now I'm trying to set up things for you. They're set, they're ready to go, but you're not ready. Now I'm fucking off my relationships, it's fucking up the money. And now I've invested two or three months into you. Am I? Am I? Am I? <laughs> am I? Am I hey, in the? Hey, am hey. I in the? Rob, hit the fucking gavel, man. This motherfucker. He done. <laughs> so basically, hit the gavel, man. That's why we say we're gonna call this show, man. Agree or disagree. So I have won my debate in this debate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even from a personal standpoint. Hey, but you know what? I can shake your hand because then I'm gonna tell you why. And then we'll end this episode, man. But I'll let you have the last word. <laughs> For a man to admit his faults is a big man. And to come to the conclusion, because a lot of people blame a lot of shit on other people and they can't admit their faults. And was there a fault in certain ways of communication? Yeah. Because there's a there's a there's a uh, there was a fault in the way that we may communicate or just a culturally difference. Yeah. But at the same time, it wasn't that you wasn't hot, and you and you brought out some good points because yeah, I was fucking pissed at them times that I'm like, huh? You don't do what? You uh, huh? You but exactly. But the fact that you can see that. Let's me know the growth, man. So ultimately, even though I win this fucking debate, Barack ends up winning this fucking conversation, man, because he was able to be the bigger man, man, and come and admit some of his faults and come to the realization, man. So yeah, you go ahead and have the last word, man, since you won. No. Well, last word was yours. <laughs> man, Psst. agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs>